Today we're looking at the, one of the most well-known portions of the Bible, the Magnificat, and yet seldom do I think we really do it justice. The background to it, of course, if you remember your uh, Bible stories, Mary travels probably in a caravan of people uh, to visit her relative Elizabeth in Judah. So this is a journey that would have taken from three to five days. Uh, this young teenage girl Mary finds herself expecting a child uh, old enough to remember the Beatles. You'll remember let it be, let it be, let it be. Uh, Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom, let it be, because that is what Mary said to the angel when she was told that she was going to give birth uh, to a child by the Holy Spirit, let it be according to your word. So Mary appears to have this wonderful gift of acceptance. I wish I was more like that. I wish I could just say, let it be, let it be. Uh, uh, and so she finds herself on a trip uh, to her cousin Elizabeth, who was also uh, bearing a child, uh, a miracle child, because if, if you remember uh, back, uh, Elizabeth was too old uh, to, to have children uh, and uh, they really had believed that they would never be able to have a child uh, and the same angel Gabriel had come to her husband Zachariah the priest and told him if you remember that they too would have a very special baby who of course was John the Baptist and so this is the background to this portion of scripture here. And I don't know what Mary was thinking that she would say to her cousin when she greeted her. It seems that Elizabeth knew. She looked at her and Elizabeth said that the child in her womb leapt for joy. Uh, and she blesses Mary uh, and says, uh, how wonderful that it is that the mother of her Lord has come to visit her and uh, believe her story that this really is a miracle child. I mentioned uh, Mary's accepting the gracious attitude and here she is again. She is just full of praises. Uh, in actual fact, she is bursting. Uh, with with joy, dancing for joy, <laughs> uh, and certainly uh, these are called songs. These are canticles. Here she is on her cousin's doorstep, and she appears to be anointed, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, um, at which point she just pours out this this prophetic word uh, to have known her her uh, ancient Hebrew scriptures very well quite similar uh, to parts of 1 Samuel chapter 2 uh, Hannah in a similar way praises God expecting a child and also she quotes from Psalm 107 verse 9 of how God has filled the hungry with good things but has turned the rich and the proud are empty away. Now I said earlier that we, we don't really do justice to this, it's such a well-known portion of ancient scripture, it's incredibly radical. Uh, I believe this has been uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit and that leads me to feel that we have uh, in many ways a radical God, a God who sees things as they really are, who sees the injustice of our world, of our city, and despises uh, that injustice. He turns the rich 
away empty-handed and he exalts the humble. He lays on a feast for the poor. He scatters the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Let's finish with a prayer. You are the Holy One, that you have brought us joy and goodness. You have blessed us with so many blessings. Uh, we love you and we praise you. Uh, like Mary, we thank you uh, for all that you have done for us. Uh, and holy is your name. We recognise that you are the God of Abraham, Israel's God, and you are also our God, our Saviour. And Lord, we call to you about the injustice in this world. Lord, why is it that there are so many poor uh, who would long to sit down to such a feast? And why is it uh, that so many proud and arrogant people seem to have it all their own way? And yet, Lord, we take comfort uh, from this piece of scripture. We take comfort in Mary's rejoicing that you are a God of justice. You will scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts. And you will bless the humble poor, those who come to you with nothing except you, what you have given to us uh, and say, Lord, if we are rich, we are, we are rich in our souls. We are spiritually rich. We are spiritually blessed. Thank you, Lord, for Mary's example. Make us those who long for justice, who fight for justice, who hate injustice, and who are not afraid to challenge it.